Hi, this is Mark Ganser with EAC with this week's Tip of the Week. What I'm going to talk about today is something that I presented a couple of years ago at PTC User, but it is still just as relevant today. We're going to look at using rules in layers mostly and a little bit about simplified reps too. Well, what is a rule? Well, a rule, for, for lack of a, of a better description, is basically a search that's continuously applied. And you can embed these rules in layers or simplified reps. You've got a number of attributes you can use for these rules. Uh, you can look at the name and type of an item. You've got all kinds of flags about history, its current status, its number. Uh, is it regenerated or not? Now, one way people have done layers in the past, and this has been around forever with uh, ProEngineer and Creo Parametric, is a config option. And you can see it on the screen right here. One of the problems with this config option is it has to be active when you're creating the model and creating features that will go on the layers. Also, you can only apply one rule to a given layer, so they're somewhat limiting. One of the greatest things about rules and layers is extending those rules, where I can take a model from someone else with uh, different named layers or no layers at all, and I can take my rule-based layers and I can embed them into these new models. So I can take a set of layers I have that are based on rules and using a simple command built in, I can extend those so those layers are applied to all the other models in the assembly. And we'll see that live as well. Well, why don't we get started and show you this in, Pro, in Creo Parametric. Now what I have up in Creo Parametric right now is an assembly template. You can see it's got a few uh, datum items, nothing in there yet. I'm going to switch over to the layer display. And you can see that I've got a bunch of layers here that are all based on rules. Now we can look at uh, how some of these work by going into a rule, and going to its properties, hitting the rules tab, and let's take a look at those. Here's an example of a layer that's uh, going to grab all my default datum planes. It used to be in uh, Creo Parametric long ago, they used to do the default coordinate system first and then the three, three uh, datum planes. Somewhere along the line they switched it so the datum planes go first. So what I've done is I've created a couple rules. I wanted to look for datum planes and whose feature number is somewhere between one and four. So no matter how the, the uh, part was created, it'll catch both uh, eventualities. So you can do multiple uh, rules in any of these layers. You've got an AND and OR condition. What I want to show you too now is these rules are built into the template. So I'm not at the mercy of some config file that may or may not be loaded. Uh, I don't have to wait to create a type of entity for the layer to show up. You can see I've got some layers with nothing on them. This default datum plane has uh, three planes on it, but a lot of these things are empty. So with these travel with the template, if I've got a, a partner or a vendor doing some work for me, I can just send them my templates. Now, why is this thing a nice, uh, one of the nice benefits of rules? Well, let me show you something. I'm going to grab a different model. Let's say uh, a supplier or a vendor has made this for me. Well, let's turn off those planes for that matter. Now you can see when I go to the layer tree, it's got different named layers, and this is even in a foreign language. There's some English, some other. So you know what? Let's get rid of all the layers that exist on this model, and let's populate this with my layer scheme. So I'm going to go into the search tool in the layer tree, and I want to find all datum planes whose name is asterisk wildcard. Select all. Now notice this is an assembly. It's grabbing all the datum planes, not only at the assembly level, but in all the constituent parts. So let's close that out. And let's delete those layers. So you can see now I've got this assembly and the parts that make it up, none of them have any layers. So let's go back to that start assembly, that template we have. Nothing in it. Go to model tree so you can see that. Let's assemble in that part, or that assembly, excuse me, we just looked at. We don't really care where it goes. We're not going to keep this assembly, so let's just give it the default constraint. Now, I can go back to my layer tree. I can grab all these rule-based layers here, and I can say, I want to extend those rules. And by doing this, I'm saying, 
take all these rules that I've made that are at this top level assembly template and push those rules out to every subassembly and part in there. So now I can close this window down. I don't have to save that. And when I go back to this assembly where I deleted all those old layers, notice that I've got my rule scheme pushed in there. And you can see all of these things, all these layers have been pushed down to the lowest level. And because of the rules, all these entity types have been automatically placed on the layers. So really it's doing all my work for me. One of the biggest complaints I've gotten from people when I talk about this is they say, well, hey, I don't want a lot of empty layers here. I like the fact that the config.pro option will only create those layers when I create entities that can go on them. Well, it's very easy to create a map key, and I've done that, called filter layers, which basically takes out of the display every layer that doesn't have anything on it. And you can see it does that right there. And I've got a map key that undoes it as well, that unfilters that. So if I really don't want to see a lot of layers that are empty, I can uh, turn them off. So if you have any questions about this or anything else, you can contact me, Mark Ganser, or one of the other technical account managers at EAC, or contact your EAC account manager. Thanks and have a great day.